Okay. Whoops. Yes, we're here. Okay, uh, I'm gonna let, I'm realizing that um, Facebook takes a minute to let you all know that we have our Facebook Live. So I am now going to, come the new year, um, we're just making the show better and better. So in the new year, we're gonna have it go on about three minutes before 9.45. I think we're keeping the time the same. And then it'll pop, You know, it'll let you know there's gonna be a Facebook Live. That way you don't miss it because you know what's fun? asking a question in real time and then getting a real time answer, especially if you've just got stuff going on, you know? So today, oh, I didn't put a title, but I am gonna be just answering some of the really great questions that came in yesterday. And this time of year, what we have to recognize is this time of year is ripe with our triggers, okay? So when you take a look at habit formation, and if you haven't read Atomic Habits, ha The Power of Habit, any of those books, if you like personal development or you're, you know, if you ever have the thought, God, I wonder what's wrong with me, like I used to, you're gonna recognize nothing's wrong with you. You have a healthy functioning brain and the brain searches for the easiest way to live your life, not the best way to live your life the easiest way. The easiest way to live your life is just keep doing what you've been doing, okay? That's easy. If you just keep doing what you've been doing, you don't have to think, you don't have to change, you don't have to get uncomfortable, you don't have to do anything differently. So there's nothing ever wrong with us. We are literally wired to find the path of least resistance. Why? Because that ensures our survival. So right now we don't actually have a ton of threats. I, you know, I'm not worried when I leave my house today that the snake or the lion or the cheetah is going to get me. Uh, most of the stuff that I create will be in my head, probably like you two. So good morning. Ooh, I'm gonna be able to, okay, good, comments are on. Sometimes if you don't uh, have permission with Ecamm to um, let me see your name, you only have to do it once if you give them permission, but then I can see it. So that's not the one I wanna see. What I like to be able to do, here we go, is be able to see comments. So now I've got my phone, if you comment, I'll know, um, which is helpful. Okay, so I'm gonna be asking or answering questions from yesterday and Tuesday. And what I wanna do is I wanna start with this one. So Christine, this is for you. You asked, what hits all of the pleasure senses in the brain like manufactured sugar? We all know what it's like when you get that sugar hit, right? Um, so the sugar, fat, and the alcohol of Irish cream. Do you just need to pause? Okay, so let's really hear the question. What hits all of the pressure senses in the brain like sugar, fat, and alcohol in a drink? Uh, this is a great question. So first of all, what we have to recognize is chances are at some point in your life, you made a decision to have Irish cream. For anybody watching this, insert your drink. Prosecco, glass of wine, rum and coke, uh, rum and eggnog, whatever, okay? You made the decision. And when you made the decision, chances are you were doing it uh, for good. Maybe you were doing it on a first date with someone or at your first Christmas with someone, or maybe you were doing it um, with your family or you saw your parents do it. or. And, and so many of the reasons, let's just use this for good. When you first started doing this, you got not just the drink, there's all of the circumstances that are occurring at the same time as you do the behavior that activate so much of the brain. So my, you know, when I thought about this question yesterday, do you wanna know what my uh, first answer was? So the question is, if you're just tuning in, it's this, what activates the pleasure senses in the brain? Um, love, love love activates the pleasure senses in the brain. When we feel a sense of belonging, deep connection, when we feel loved, when we're giving love, when we feel safe, love will do this in your brain. It will light up, right? So often when we're using other things to get that dose of love, connection, belonging, community, all of the things, um, oh good, you're putting up your Christmas tree. Okay, yay. Uh, when you, when you have that, what happens is, oh, in order for me to feel loved or in order for me to belong or in order for me to feel safe or in order for me to feel more secure, I'm gonna have the drink. So in my Weight Loss Academy, what I teach is everything happens in the pause. And the pause is you have a cue and you have what you do, your routine, your habit, okay? so. I, like I said, all of us are being wired to live life easy, right? So the path of least resistance is what's easy. So the cue and then the tr the cue and then the habit. The pause is when you slow down and give yourself enough time to breathe and to think of a new thing to do. 
and it's really uncomfortable. <laughs> like I gotta tell you, it's not fun in the beginning. It's it, it's disconcerting. You want it. You want. You will always crave what you've done in the past. Fact. You don't crave the change you're creating. Okay. And I think a lot of times we get into the idea that oh, um, if I really want this, all of these things that I'm doing myself for myself are gonna feel fun. It's gonna feel easy. Oh my gosh, no, 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 it does not. So Christine, I think that yes, it's the pause. Second of all, it's also doing something new that can allow you to get the same emotional reward that is um, gonna let your brain light up in that same way, but maybe in a slightly healthier way. And again, what we're talking about here, you know, one ounce or a little bit of Irish cream, it's not, this isn't the worst thing. It's, oh, I'm drinking like six ounces a night, every night for, for two weeks. Well, that's a lot. That's gonna have impact on your weight come January, no doubt. I know you're not doing that, but I'm just saying, this is not about, no, I can never have the Irish cream or the Baileys or the Carolyn's or what, Frangelico is actually what I enjoy, but even not very much, I find it weird. Um, so that's question one. Sandy, this is for you. Okay, so I, first of all, I just love when I see comments like this. So Sandy said, I think the connection between trusting ourselves and having control was helpful. That was uh, the, the Facebook Live either yesterday or the day before. About two weeks ago, you said the three little words that seem to have reverberated through me. It's just food. Isn't that great when you start to like recognize it's just food? But to me, this was profound. Um, combined with the kitty cat portion, she's now lost five pounds. Sandy, that's so good, that's so good. No one understands what it takes to lose five pounds more than me, so that's amazing. Um, and basically, uh, here's the part of the question I wanna get to. Uh, did you mean behavior is stronger than thinking or comes before it? Okay, great question. The thinking, so how this works, and if you have uh, a pen, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get to the point where I can draw on my iPad and you'll be able to see this, but just if you have a pen, um, write this out with me. I'm going to show you. If you've ever been to one of my live events, you know I'm horrible at writing and drawing in real time, and it just, I feel like that's one of my quirks, <laughs> so my terrible artistry. All right. Thoughts, feelings, actions, outcomes. This is what you wanna write down. So I'm gonna take this off, Sandy, um, but this question is for you and you're gonna understand that it goes like this. And then we go like this. Okay, here we go. Are you ready? Hey, hi, good morning. Okay, this is what this looks. You have a thought. So basically the thing that happens before the thought are the circumstances, events, the cues, the triggers. It's like the reality of your life. There's things that happen before we have a thought. And those things are, are so I'm just gonna put that up here. I'm just gonna call it circumstances or I'm gonna call it maybe facts of your life. You know, it's the facts of your life. It's raining today. Maybe you're, you're carrying a ton of debt. Maybe you're 20 pounds overweight. Like they're facts, okay? So there's gonna be, hey, Alex, good morning. You made it, yes. Um, so there's gonna be these things. They trigger thoughts. The thoughts you have generate your feelings. What's a feeling? It's a, you're consciously aware of an emotional experience. That's what a feeling is. You know that you feel sad, pissed, angry, happy, lonely, sad, annoyed, frustrated, joyful, loving. Can't you, you have an awareness of it. Emotions are, they can be present and they can be at the subconscious, unconscious level. So feelings are things that you know you are experiencing. These feelings will lead to your behavior. An action is a behavior. Now, what I like to teach is the AIR acronym, A-I-R, action, inaction, reaction. There are always, you're doing one of those three things. These actions create the outcomes in your life. The outcomes are the results that you're living. So. What we have to do, a lot of times in the dieting world, everything is action focused. Do this, don't do that. Uh, can't have this, make a list, track your food, go shopping, go prepping, blah, blah, blah. And it's all good stuff, except if you don't understand the thoughts and feelings that are driving the actions, then you keep repeating and getting the same outcomes and results in your life. Just make sure that you're giving me a thumbs up or a heart if that makes sense. So where the self-sabotage book, if you don't have it, grab it in the top of the post, right? Stop sabotaging your weight loss. It's free PDF. Is we have to understand that, again, we are all sabotaging, okay? We are all, you're either consciously aware that you sabotage or you're in denial and you do, right? So 
the biggest thing I see for women with this, their thinking, is sometimes women want to think their way to perfection before they take action. That's procrastination. That's needing to get it right. That is a self-sabotaging pattern. So we need to be able to have the courage to have thoughts that are a little bit better than the ones we had yesterday so we can generate better feelings. The more that we feel better about who we are and what we're doing and where we're going, the better actions we take. When you take better actions, so let's just say, let's just work this through. Circumstances, it's uh, Thursday night, um, there's Christmas stress, there's family dynamics happening, it's a long day at work, I still have Christmas shopping to do, I don't prep and I get home at nine. And I think, God, what's wrong with you, Jen? Why do you always get yourself in the same position? You know what, screw it, just eat the chips tonight and have the half bottle of wine, right? The thought, I'm already thinking something, my feelings are going to be despondent, apathetic, unmotivated, whatever, I don't care. Um, so my actions are, I'm going to drink the half bottle of wine and eat the chips. What's my outcome? Well, my weight's not going to change. And then my weight doesn't change. So now I go back and I'm still overweight. And so I keep having the same thoughts about myself. God, what's wrong with me? How come I can't lose this weight? I feel really unmotivated. I don't feel like I'm ever going to be successful. So I don't take any actions that will help generate. So this is just like we get caught on the hamster wheel and it's exhausting. So the thing that I want to be so careful with is you cannot just focus on the actions because a lot of times that leads to white knuckling or on the wagon, off the wagon, or uh, chasing Mondays. You're, you know, you're good Monday to Thursday, and then you're chasing a Monday because uh, you drop off, you know, fall off the wagon. So we want to have this beautiful balance between being aware of your thinking, really paying attention to your feelings, knowing you're either going to be in action, in action, or in a reaction, and that that's affecting you, affects your outcomes. If you want better outcomes, you cannot just focus on the behavior. You have to go back to your thinking. So Sandy, if you are watching this, please, please um, tell me if that helps you. And for anybody else, let me know. Does that land for you? Can you see it? right? Feeling scared, feeling crazy, feeling like you're going to be food obsessed, not wanting to have to pay attention to your food all the time, not wanting to have to think about it. You just want to feel normal. You feel out of control. All of that thinking generates everything that you've just thought because you like to be right about yourself. So if you're going to think stuff, why don't you think good stuff about yourself and be right about that and generate the actions and results in your life from that place? Okay, another question from Christine, and I think this is brilliant. Let me get it. Uh, why isn't it clicking? There we go. Okay, so I hope, I believe that this is very relevant for a lot of women right now. Why do our most destructive habits hit us when we are at our most emotionally depleted? Great question. And you know, you don't have to say that maybe you're feeling that way, but I know I've been feeling this way. Um, emotionally depleted, when you're emotionally depleted, what's happening? So here's what's happening with the chemistry around that. When you're emotionally deple depleted, chances are you will also be physically depleted, possibly a little bit tired. The feelings of being tired and stressed actually impair the frontal cortex of your brain. The frontal cortex of your brain is the decision-making center. It is the place that I need, is the part of my system that I need to use in order to think well and make good or new decisions. If I'm emotionally depleted, chances are I'm also going to feel a little bit emotionally hijacked, uncentered, out of balance, out of sync, insecure, like I've just been giving it all away. So usually if there's emotional depletion, we have boundaries being stepped on, we're not using our voice, we're losing our sense of self, we, we don't, and we don't know what to do about it. We want to change it, maybe, or we're like... Why do, you know, we're in that place of just drain. When you're in that place, the brain goes, let's just make the path of least resistance for her. Let's just clear, clear away any obstacles here and let's just get her feeling good again. What, and this is where you'll go back and revert to old habits because your brain goes, oh, I know. When she used to drink, eat, watch TV, have pop, I have no idea what you're doing, Christine, but I'm making, you know, the things I hear up. Let's just get her doing that again. So now you've got a new a pathway ahead of you. It is so easy to go down it. Why? Because previously in your life, you've taken those actions. And so there's part of your brain that has neurons that have uh, wi fired together and then they've wired together. And when you're in the state of change, these new neural connections are not strong. You're like a baby. <laughs> it's like baby neural connections. They're there, but when that drain is there, 
it's hard. And so we revert back. And this is why you're going to see progression, regression, progression, regression, two steps forward, one step back, three steps forward, four steps back. The whole point is you keep going forward. You don't let the backtrackings, you know, derail you. You go, oh my gosh, I'm learning so much about myself right now. And that's how you stay gentle and you move from being gentle and consistent and to coming back to the game, right? So it's like, it's like, oh, why are we playing the hardest team when our star quarterback is out for the count right now? You don't just give up the game. You, you make all parts of the team elevate so that you can keep going forward and give yourself a good chance of winning. And along the way, you take breath, breaks, you celebrate where you've come, and you recommit to where you are going. The biggest thing I see about women is they stop before they let themselves become successful. And everybody in my community gets to win, right? Like that's the, that's the whole goal. So um, these questions have been awesome. Thank you for asking them. Uh, what I want to share is if you are, have been watching these Facebook Lives, if you're new to my community, if you, if you don't know what the Academy is, if you are over 40 and you know that come the new year, you, you need to plan in place. You need to know that you are not going to be doing this on your own, tackling this on your own. You're worn out. You're ready for support and doing it in a sane, healthy way with me. And you're like, oh yeah, I'd love to hear what that looks like. Well, then if you want to talk, click, go to your computer and you can fill out an application to chat. All right, every day women in the academy are accomplishing what was once the impossible in their own mind. And that's jenniferpowder.com forward slash apply. Right, all that happens there is we're gonna be able to hop on Zoom, I'm gonna listen to you and get to know you, and we can get you set up with a plan. Sometimes just knowing that you've got support changes the whole way that you're gonna handle these next two weeks. Um, so there is still there is still room in our December cohort. Our January cohort is gonna be full soon. Um, amazing. So listen, you guys, this is the last Facebook Live this week. I hope you enjoyed it um, a little bit longer. I wanted to make sure I got those questions answered before we headed into this weekend because uh, they, they're all relevant. And I will see you back next week. Next week, we have Facebook Lives on Tuesday, Wednesday. I am traveling on Thursday, so that will be a day off. But hopefully, I'll have a pre-recorded video I can get out to you. And I'll be wishing everybody a happy holiday. Anyways, I'll see you next Tuesday.